Alpacas have long been a popular choice of farm animal for people with smaller properties or those wanting interesting farm pets. Daryl and Diane Lehman began with a small number of alpacas but are now breeding, showing and growing their alpaca herd, which currently numbers around 40. Diane also works with alpaca fleece and yarn to create a number of products. We were dairy farming originally. This is originally our block. And then we subdivided it off. And uh, yeah, we've come back to these and just absolutely love it. They're quite easy. As you can see, they, they come up, they're very mischievous. They, they like to be around you. So as far as moving them, dead easy. You just open the gate and they come on through. You don't have too many problems with them, uh, you, as long as you drench them. You cut their toenails probably once a year. Uh, inject them, same as for, like for sheep, for worms. Um, and other than that, shear them, that's it. You get facial eczema, so we give them pellets for about a month and a half, two months, and then we just cut the pellets out after that. The female doesn't cycle until the male comes to them. So in actual fact, you can have it any time of the year you like, have the mating, and you can have the career any time of the year you like. They'll only sit when they're open, which means they're ready to be mated. They will spit at the male if they're not open. It means that they're pregnant. You bring the male in and you can guarantee that they're going to spit or run away or kick. They, they do all sorts of things just to keep away from the male. Bigger breeders or those that are showing a lot of animals, they will have them condensed down into probably a month where they can select their career and take them to the shows. You'll see some of them probably come up and they'll sit down the other side of the gate. And you know very well that they're ready to be mated. So he, um, with that, that sound, it, it, it does attract them, yes. Come here, Oscar. We're going to put a halter on you. It's the first time for you today, isn't it? Hey, we'll give you a try. Nice. So we would like to halter train all our animals. And as the boys get older and they go to stud, um, they certainly need to be halter trained, as you've seen before, with Marconi. Um, so we teach them how to, how to lead on the halter, and um, it takes a while. He's actually done, done very well for the first time on today. But for the show ring, we need them definitely halter trained. Good boy. No. We have none of that. No. Who would buy them? Another alpaca breed or other people as well. It doesn't have, necessarily have to be an alpaca breeder. But how we started off, we just had a, a young boy that um, we quite liked the look of and liked his colouring, so I thought that that's what we'd do. You are a good boy. It's yeah. very interesting to see competition out there. It can go from $10,000 right up to $167,000, $180,000. It's a lot of money, but it's, but it's worth it in the long run. If you work out you know, $1,200 per mating, um, if you've got a herd of 50 or 60, it soon adds up. So it's worthwhile paying good money for a male. We also sell to the pet market. There's a lot of people that just have two or three alpacas. You've got to have at least two. They are a pack animal that doesn't need to have two. But some have three or four. They're so friendly, so easy to handle, easy care. And um, you can get the advantages of being able to get the fleece from them and use that as well. Oh, it's coming up there. This is the fleece of our silver grey girl. This particular fleece was the first one I've ever shown. I wasn't going to show fleeces, but I decided I'd give it a go. And I'm um, very impressed. Our first time out, first lot of fleece I did, and we came home with a reserve champion, first prize as a reserve champion. This one's sitting at around about 20 micron. It can go from 13 or 14 right up to 25, some, sometimes more for the older animals. But um, yeah, we like to keep ours around the 20. On a female, of the good blanket, you get three to four kilo, and that's the main blanket, which is like the saddle of the animal. And then you've got all the underbellies and all that, which we send away for installation, and get a fairly good price for that as well. We shear it once a year. We've got two wonderful shearers, John and Sonia, that come in and shear with us. These are some of the finished products. I send some of the pieces away to be spun for me into yarn. Some comes back into yarn. Some comes back as I get them carded and then needle felted commercially over at Waimarie. And as far as the yarn is concerned, I then go on and make my garments. I just love knitting and I just love creating. And I, most of these patterns have actually come out of my head. They haven't actually been of a pattern that's... 
see? What's it doing? You know, it's a warm your hair. In your boots. It's your boots. It's on your boots. I always thought they were long neck sheep, and um, I fought the issue for four years. <laughs> and and uh, Diane, she um, conned me into it, and now I think they're just marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Um, you know, if you have a bad day, you can go down in, in amongst them and they'll come around, and you can, you know, you'll hear them humming, and, and oh, it's just so peaceful. I think there is a big future for it, both fleece-wise and also, do I say it, uh, meat-wise, because there's going to be a lot of them around, and, uh, yeah, I think what between your fleece, your hides and your meat, there is a big market in there. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.